Hey, buddies, Potato McWhiskey here, and welcome back to Let's Play Civilization VI as Russia, where things are going amazingly well. We've had back to back golden ages with monumentality. We have a massive empire we spread all around the world. We have huge gold income, we have huge faith income pretty good culture income okay science income but we are firing on all cylinders and we just got grandmaster's chapel which should allow me to go around here and make sure that every single one of my cities has a garrison unit uh, for fairly cheap and uh, the reason i want a garrison unit in every single city is because i have the card uh, let me go ahead and find it i'm buying heavy cav heavy chariots by the way because i believe that they could theoretically be upgraded into cuirassiers later in the game um yeah I, I have the card plugged in the retainers card that gives me plus one amenity in cities with a garrison so that's 110 faith for one amenity in a city that seems like a pretty reasonable deal plus it also increases my military score makes me look a little bit less attractive to go to war with so there's all these kind of like secondary benefits as well do i want mont saint michel i think my faith is going to be pretty heavily used for a lot of different things in this game and i don't really necessarily need to go for mont saint michel I would like to get Moksha because Moksha will give me a lot of really nice benefits, namely the plus two faith for every specialty district. But also we could theoretically move on the way down to Divine Architect, which could be something that we look into doing into the mid to late game. And I'm not entirely against that plan. So for some reason, there we go. Nice. 10 population reach. That's plus one error score. We have secured ourselves a normal age. We do now need to also consider how the hell we're going to deal with all of this annoying stuff that Grand Columbia is still sending at us. He does not want peace for some strange reason. We're not ready for any new buildings in here. Yep, we're continuing to work theatre square projects because it's just the most efficient thing to do at our time. Do I have a theatre square coming up in all the nets? I'm going to teleport you to all the nets or at least a city nearby. But the real thing that I want to do in all the nets is actually get the harbour out. So I'm going to prioritise that because I want to get the harbour out so that I can get the mausoleum as well as the great lighthouse of uh, memes. So talking about the city of St. Petersburg, I'm doing a lot of internal trade routes. Where's my best theater square? So my best theater square is right there. So I will put my commercial hub on the other side, like right here. That seems fine. And we do want to get the commercial hub in here because we would like to grow the city and do all sorts of jazzy things like that. And we do want to make sure that we keep suzerainty of two cultural city states because that is giving us a huge amount of culture per turn and culture is quite important. Namely, we want to prevent our enemies from getting culture, but also we want as much culture as possible because the more culture we can generate this game, the faster we can power our way to the the late game. One thing I also need to be doing is making sure that I'm continuously purchasing builders. I'm building up a massive supply of builders so I can do an instantaneous giga huge uh, switch to um, national parks when the time comes. I do need to sit down probably sometime the turn. Probably the turn that I unlock national parks is the turn that I'll do this. But yeah, I'm also I'm also sending out massive amounts of scouts into the new world to figure out things. Rebellion in seven turns. Could I just grab like Moksha and put him into that city just to make sure Moscow stays with us? I like how Moscow is like a city that's like gonna get having a bad time. I'll buy a builder in there. So Grand Columbia actually managed to capture a unit of mine. Uh, looks like we're voting on duplicate resources. The best way to do that is to look up the resources. Sorry, not that one. Whoops. It is the other resource button over here, the global resources. It looks like silk or truffles will get banned or salt. If I had to guess, it would be truffles. Yes. My guess is truffles, so I'm going to vote for truffles to get banned. I'll put two votes into that. And then usually they want to block great admirals. They want to block whatever, yeah. So great admirals are going to get blocked almost certainly. It could be great writers, depending, but I, I, I would almost certainly be willing to guess that this is great admiral blockage right here. So I'll put two votes into that and see if it comes out. All right, lovely. There's the Colosseum. That is an eight city Colosseum, by the way. Uh, this Colosseum hits eight cities, which means I'm getting two culture across eight cities. So that's 16 culture and two amenities across eight cities. So that's eight amenities. That is a huge, that is like having an extra two luxuries. No, more, more. That's like having an extra four luxuries. That's insane. It's like having an extra eight monuments at four luxuries. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Oh, actually, scientists were boosted. Interesting. And silk was blocked. Well, that wasn't the outcome that I was expecting, but it is kind of in the region of what I was expecting. Very, very surprised that they decided to block silk. Right, so the Colosseum is completed and now it's generating tourism, but more importantly, it's giving us a huge amount of happy cities. I'm using the happiness indicators mod here so you can see that four of my cities are happy, which means that four of my cities are getting a 10% boost to all of their yields. Now, with the Colosseum completed in this city, we don't have much to do until it reaches 10 population, but that's not too important. We could go ahead and build a Kotoku in, but that would be, no, not necessarily I want to build it there. Yeah, I guess you could make an argument that we should just do commercial hub projects because we have nothing else we could build. I mean, theoretically, I could be building builders, pre-building builders for later on in the game. However, if I go, yeah, I think having extra trade routes has like an awful lot of extra power. 
So just like playing tempo and going for commercial hub investments, because I can I can buy almost all the builders I need through Novgorod faith purchasing. Um, now, you could make an argument that faith banking right now would be pretty damn good move, but, you know, it's not that important. Uh, I'm going to put this trader into Moscow to give that a little bit of a boost. And then if we're looking at the city of Yaroslavl, we're going to wait two turns for it to grow. So we may as well get ancient walls. Two turns until Magnus is established in Olonets. And then good things should come to those who wait. A little bit of patience. So I've had a unit stolen. Let's see if we can't rectify that. We'll have to deal with this builder being stolen, but it's not the end of the world. The real fear would be if like a unit could get in through the back here and just go hog wild on all these spare builders I have hanging around. I'm going to spread them out a little bit just so they can't go hog wild on me. I may as well get one caravel. Right, medieval fairs. Medieval era ends at eight turns. I feel like we've made a really good medieval era. We need nine era score. Can we pull that off, actually? Theoretically, it could be possible. It's within the realm of possibility that we could do it. I don't know, though, what we could do. Let me have a little bit of a think about what we could do. Um, what am I researching? I can't get to a industrial era. Can I get a renaissance era tech? Get printing. I would need a lot more science. Let me have a think. How could I get more science? I would need an absurd amount of science to make this work because I have eight turns. Yes, yeah, so that just wouldn't work. So we'll have to make do with that. I could build a horseman. I think I don't, I haven't built a horseman yet. So, oh, apparently purchasing one from a city state did count. Interest or from a barb, barb clan. It did count. Right, I've recaptured my builder nice we have discovered the other continent and we have found mavemba pleasure to meet you mavemba why don't i send you an embassy why don't we do mutual open borders i should start getting open borders with people in the near future in fact let's 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 start it off on this turn everyone i want to have open borders with because it's an extra 25 percent tourism i also want to buy their luxuries we'll get around to that in a moment so i go to the quick deals in mod interface purchase luxury resources thank you thank you and I will sell off my own spare luxuries. Any, I don't think I have room for great works, but I would like to start buying great works soon. So Congo science is a little bit crazy, but it's only on par with Australia. So I'm not terrified yet. The, ooh, yes, more era score. That's great. So if we could get a third golden age here, I think we just actually win the game. Uh, but let's go ahead and use Zhang Qian in my capital city, which will give me a huge boost to gold because I have a ton of cities trading with my capital. It, I think it was... It, now, that might have been only international trade routes. I think there's a way that we can check that if we go to the Great Merchant here. Increases trade route capacity, forward trade routes to the city. So uh, other players are more incentivized to trade with my capital, which is nice. It's not something to entirely turn your nose up to. I don't think I'm going to be able to get a unit that uses Niter yet. I have my first great artist. Let's get him into position. This might be a great artist game. We'll see. Might skip going for archaeologists, although I do think that archaeologists are generally better than artists. Right, Magnus is established. Let's do our first chop. That finishes that. Do I want to finish the amphitheater? I think I would rather finish the mausoleum. So let's put the mausoleum in the pole position and then get ready to chop for that. Nice. A lot of turns chopped off that. Oh, we did find another city-state and it's Ayuthia. I'm hoping that I find more and more city-states as I continue to explore. And I have decided to take over manual exploration because the auto-explorer is pretty terrible. <laughs> like, it's a, it's, a, it's a super, super bad. Like, it's really bad. Chop, chop. Eight turns left on that. Good, good, good. Focusing on food to continue to grow. That's fine. You will start picking up production now. Food and production, please. Theoretically, there is room here for a mid-game settlement. Hicks on Dracon's play. Um, but if these are unoccupied islands, you never know what we could decide to do here. Ooh, we found Mitla. Finding more city-states is huge, by the way. Honestly, like, the fact that we haven't found a single uh, religious city-state is kind of devastating. Because it's six faith per holy site per, rel per religious city-state that you find. Like, it's a huge, huge boost. Yep, Ibn Fa Fadlan is a great one to pick up. This will give uh, tr an extra trade route capacity and trade routes to city-states now. Also, grant plus two faith in conjunction with Kumasi. Uh, that would mean my trade routes to city-states are now super, super, super powerful. And we will be looking to maybe start trading with city-states. Uh, one thing I want to look for here is era score. There's a couple of things here that I could chop for a quick and dirty Mont Saint Michel, maybe. I don't think I can get it in five turns, even with chops. How much are chops worth again? Baseline shot is chop is 86 production. Damn, okay. I need five era score. Let me think about this really hard. Well, Faith purchasing a great person. That's worth three. That's worth three. Boom. Easy. So now I need two era score. I'm exploring heavily. So that might do it. A chancery? Can I get a thousand gold in the bank real quick? 
see if I can sell off any of this stuff and see if I can get just like upfront gold off people. There's 300 gold, 54 gold, another 200 gold. There we go. So I should now be able to f purchase a chancery. Oh, that didn't count as a fully built district. Damn. What if I bought a great admiral? Oh yeah, there you go. Boom. Buy a great admiral. Easy. Easy done. Easy clap. No cap. But yeah, I would, I would like Mont Saint-Michel. It's a wonder. Uh, but more importantly, it's also a religious wonder. We do have medieval walls in here. We have a fully built campus. Now we can get our theater square. There's a plus three theater square right there. Very nice. It's all starting to come together. We're up to 41 tourism per turn. And that number should only grow. Um, but a triple monumentality golden age is something else. Let me tell you. I think Magnus can be moved now. I think I am going to put Magnus over into Kazan. So we can quick finish St. Basil's. Because that'll be a huge boost. Looks like Australia has already claimed that island. Which is fine. It's their prerogative. If they wish to claim islands, that's what they can do. There's stirrups. Very, very nice. Um, okay, what have we got here? It could be worth it to go for banking. I think banking is pretty low in our priority. We're going to pick up printing for the extra double, the extra tourism from Great Works of Writing. So that'll, since we're starting to get Great Works of Writing now, we want them chooching along at maximum chooch. We also have ourselves this guy. Any way I can get more food in the city? Not really. Five food surplus is kind of what we're working with in here. Um, let's go ahead and send you over to Babanza and Congo because that's the best place for you to steal gold and get yourself leveled up. We're also going to make use of you. Extra governor title. May as well take contractor, I guess. Why not? We're up to 8 out of 10 trade routes. That means we're looking good. I'm feeling very, very good about this game. Like, everything is just kind of coming along exactly how I would like it to. We've got open borders with basically everyone. I mean, we're still at war with this guy and he has zero military. I don't know why he won't take peace. Like, is he actually just begging me to kill him? What if, what if I just fake bot? Like a bunch of trebs and a great general. I mean, just, we just go kill him. He's just, he's just been a pain in my ass this entire game. What if, what if we just kill him? What if, what if we just kill Gran Colombia? We take him out. We have all this extra land to turn. Yeah, okay. We're going we're gonna to try and kill Gran Colombia. We have circumnavigated the world. Probably didn't need to do that until next era, but that's fine. So we want to go into a dark age next era. And then we want to go into a golden age, the era after that. We want to do a heroic. Or is it two eras later? I don't remember. One of the two. Uh, so let's start trading with St. Petersburg. Can I build military units? Let's build knights. Come in here, plug in chivalry. Seven turn on knights. Needs more iron. Of course it does. We'll just do a little bit of light unit construction. I'm going to save my faith for also unit purchasing. We're finding another person to make friends with. We found Lady Six Guy. We found Germany. Let's go ahead and send resident embassies. Get our open borders. Those are just like the things you should do when you find new people. And who was the last one? Yeah, I think I have open borders with everyone. Your borders are open. Your borders are open. Your borders are open. Your borders are closed because we're at war. Your borders are open. And your borders are open. And you can tell if borders are open by basically looking. You can see the dashed line. That means we can enter their borders. It's a nice little game mechanic. There you go. Perhaps you did not know about. Hmm. I wonder if it's time to start switching to trading with my city states, actually. You know, that's a good that's a good question. Uh, so unfortunately, this turn uh, decided to go uh, kek W on me and just completely crap the bed. I think I had planned to make like knights and stuff. But God, I don't even know at this point. It's all it's all gone Pete Tong. Is there, any, like, is there anything as frustrating as crashing on a turn where you did a lot of like actions that you have to try and remember? Like trading with the AI and getting new open borders agreements and stuff. Like I totally forgot to do all that. Like I have to go in now and be like, hey, resident embassy. Hey, you want open borders? Hey, okay, cool. Hey, nice to meet you. What's up? It's always just slightly demoralizing, you know, that you have to go through the process. Oh, well, the medieval era ends in two turns and we're, we're on pace to make a really good time, actually. <sighs> Will a renaissance era great general actually help me here? Probably not. Culture is shooting up, though. We're up to 150-something of it. He wants peace. Uh-uh. Nope. Yeah, now that he's, like, realized, oh, he's actually building a military, and I'm like, yep, I'm building a military, and it's time for you to die. I'm also considering levying Cardiff, and, um, yes, I will levy Cardiff, so we can get that going, because I can throw those units into the, into the meat grinder without worrying. So in terms of dedication, we have the right to go for any of these. But I think we're going to go monumentality again, just because being able to faith by builders is just like, like literally like hacking. So a few crossbows supporting this army seems like it could be useful. And I can use these horse archers and stuff to do a little bit of pillaging of whatever infrastructure that'll get me gold. So, I mean, war just seems so effective a strategy. It just seems too good almost to like, if you're not going to war, it feels like you're making a mistake. Like the optimal play is to always go to war, but I just prefer playing passively. Yeah, okay, so we have Mosley and Mahalakarnassus now. That's amazing. My troops are merely passing by. I just have boats near you. We also have military engineering. We did not hit any niter. No niter 
So Bombards are out. This is going to be a purely trebuchet based push. All right, then. But we can do a little bit of pillaging for gold. Maybe you should plug in the raid card. Uh, retainer seems important enough. Let's start getting some man at arms pushing forward as well with crossbowman support. Yeah, I think I'm going to plug out retainers and move up my military. We'll go for printing and then siege tactics. And we'll try to just brute force it with these kind of mid-tier units. My faith purchase trebs. Yes. So Smolensk, how are you doing? You've medieval walls. You've done this. Can you get me a courser? You can. Excellent. Mark it in here. Well, you know what? You could also build me a military unit. Why don't you go ahead and just get me a trebuchet? Every city must contribute to the war effort. That is the rule. Everyone just has to help a little bit. Just a little. Gain 200 gold and get an envoy. Hell yeah. Ooh, a free trader. I like that. Let's get that free trader. Creates a naval melee unit. Hell yeah. Um, John Curtin. Ooh, we found Yerevan. That's huge, actually. Let's make friends with Yerevan. That's so much faith. And that faith is going to scale. Remember, that's six faith per holy site in my empire. If I fully build my relationship with Yerevan. Plus Yerevan lets me choose from any promotion. Which is kind of invalidating Mont Saint Michel. If I want thingy. But it also makes winning a religion victory like super easy. And I could very much so conquer this continent with religion if I so chose. That we might do that. We'll see. All right, Magnus is established in Kazan. Let's wake up our builders. Let's make sure we have the right tiles. We do in fact have the right tiles. Let's make sure we chop this four turns. Um, all in it. Do you have a trader? You do have a trader. Do you have a trader? You do have a trader. Okay. You do have a trader. You do not have a trader. So I'm, I'm going through and I'm making sure that every city in my empire has actually got their trader up and running. Free trader in this city? Hell yeah. I could trade with Mabanza. Definitely want to trade with Mogadishu. I mean, look at that. Eight gold, four culture, two faith. Hell yeah. And if we can become uh, big friends of Mogadishu, that could lead to even better things. Have my spy gaining sources in Amanza Congo so I can start stealing gold. I don't actually want the gold. I just want an opportunity to level up my guy. Is Australia on this island on their own? Interesting. It looks like it. Looks like they got their own little continent to themselves. Nan Madal doing work here. I need a thousand gold to levy. If I could levy them, however... I think we could take this, so we should look. We should look for pillages to see if we can pull that off. All right, let's start moving in and doing little chunks of damage here. Bandar Brunei. Well, I would definitely want to trade with Kumasi because I'll be able to plug in the Envoy card here in a moment. We got another Treb. Good. Um, let's Faith buy a Treb from here again. And I'll also Faith buy a Knight, like, next turn. I could hard build a Knight. They only take a few turns. So my hope is that the investment into this war should not be too heavy. And we should be able to get away with conquering him without massively hurting our empire. We might like leave him on like a single city or something. Like Caracas. Caracas? Whatever. So he only has ancient walls. Unfortunately, I can get a siege tower and that might be enough until he gets renaissance walls. I mean, you know, he's building medieval in some of these cities. <gasps> he's going for Mont Saint-Michel. That mother effer. I mean, the good news is his cities aren't really strong enough to do much against crossbows yet. So even a humble crossbow is doing work. Brilliant. We have our first knight who we can send to the front line. And we also have a courser here we can send to the front line. We're up to a thousand mili military score compared to his. It'll be a pretty slow and grindy war, to be all, to be honest with you. Um, but it should be like a war with a foregone conclusion. It, there should be no doubt as to who's going to win this war. Right, another crossbow attack. Step on there to pillage that. We have another courser coming to the front line. Lovely, there is St. Basil's Cathedral and look at this wonderful, wonderful tundra terrain that we can yoink Arena. And this is only the first incarnation of this tundra terrain. You just wait until we can get lumber mills, national parks, all that sort of stuff in here. And it's going to truly, truly pop off. Let's take a turn to get a couple of more knights. Begin trebbing down the city. You can't hit it from there. Um, well, then we'll have to do this. Maracaibo should fall the next turn or two. We can finally infix, inflict righteous vengeance. Just for the sake of finishing the Mont Saint-Michel, I'm going to switch this tile and chop. And I'm going to switch this tile and chop as well. Okay, it's already switched. Boom. <gasps> no! Ah, uh, it tricked me. The game tricked me. Okay, the UI did, had like a little flash and it looked like it was set up properly. Um... No, well, that's just unfortunate, I guess. Mont Saint Michel, happy days. There we go. Plus one era score and nationalism. So we can start combining units together. Um, I think what we'll do is we'll get an attack off first and then combine. There we go. There's our first core. And then we do like attack, like this guy attacks. And then this guy cores him. Um, and then this guy. Unfortunately, it can't core city state units, which kind of sucks. 
um, but at the same time, it's not that big of a deal. Right, so we have nationalism. Let's make our way towards conservation. That's going to trigger a massive change in our empire. Speaking of massive change, we should start doing builders to be ready for that change. Um, you're a 10 population. You're waiting to go up. I could build Taj Mahal. I'm not going to. I could build Kotoku in. I'm not going to. Instead, I'll just get more spies and, and keep 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 on that track. All right, Lavra. There's a good Lavra here-ish, I think. Plus four Lavra is like, okay. It's like on par for being... An all right one. Let's go ahead and promote grants with Pingala in the capital so we get extra great people points. You're on auto explore. Let's talk to India and say, hey, resident embassy, how about open borders? Bob's your uncle. How about a friendship? How about an alliance? How about a cultural alliance of all things? Actually, yeah, cultural alliance. Oh my God, I keep misclicking. Oh my God, I've misclicked three times in a row. What is happening? Cultural alliance, please. Jesus. This is what happens when you play the game too much. You like click too fast for yourself. Unfortunately, the world is going to hate me for killing Grand Columbia, but that's why my goal isn't to like completely wipe him out. It's to just severely clip his wings. Okay, we just want to make it so that he can't soar like an eagle anymore. We just want to clip him in, take him down a peg. That's all. Now, he really wants peace, but he fucked up. He like at a certain point, it's like it's righteous vengeance. You know what I mean? At a certain point, this is just like super necessary. All right? Boom. We are blowing apart the city and its walls. Get those knights in there. Now my units aren't very good at actually taking the city aside from ranged attacks, so we will continue to um, provide assistance on that front. The city is now surrounded, so it won't passively heal. We'll pillage a little bit. There's mercantilism. Very nice. It's always worth it to pillage, I feel. Uh, this trader, I guess, can go into Astrakhan. And let's start doing diplomatic leagues so we can do Vissel Banking. And we'll start trading with city-states and other players that we have alliances with. City of Smolensk needs two more turns. Um, why don't you go ahead and build me a Treb? What do you got? You got seven pop. You got your lighthouse as an option. Get that lighthouse. You have built your ancient walls. Go ahead and get your shrine and faith up. Uh, what if I bring the siege tower over? Yeah, the cities are just too strong for the siege tower right now. My units aren't strong enough. I would need a second man at arms. I have one on the way and these guys will combine. First field cannon on the enemy or, or um, bombard on the enemy side is out. So he does have a tech advantage, but I have a momentum and size advantage which I think is the only two advantages you really need. Go ahead and make a core out of this guy. You step there. Chip damage is always enough. You don't need anything other than chip damage. I definitely need a crossbowman to, to interface with this guy. Let's go ahead and faith purchase a crossbow to bring up an interface. So I'd like to trade with my allies, but I also want to trade with like Bandai Brunei and Kumasi, but especially Kumasi. Look at that trade route to Kumasi. Like it's insane. But I'll do Bandai Brunei because I think I'm Susan of them and I think I'm comfortably sues one of them so that should be fine but yeah i want to start trading with city states because that just has a huge huge value proposition all right printing is completed let's go ahead and blow maracaibo out of the water this should allow me to finish the city easy 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 comfortable finish and let's continue the push always be pushing now i don't love the fact that i'm gonna to have to take this guy's capital but um, he has just been a massive pain in my ass. And I think, again, like I said, this is just righteous vengeance, right? He's just, he's been a tool the entire game and he's getting what was coming to him. I gave him plenty of opportunities to not act the way that he did. And he dropped the ball every single time, every single time. I'm going to plug back in limes now that I'm not really building military. Um, because I want to be able to make walls efficiently. Because it's about the phase of the game where you should be making your walls if you are indeed going to make them. Um, because we're going to make our way towards steel very soon. Now our science is a little bit weak, so it'll be an unfortunate steel game. All right, let's keep this train a rolling. Yeah, I'm okay with losing units to a bombard. Um, his military score is still really low. I'm on par for science, which means he's only slightly ahead of me in terms of positioning. We should be able to make short work of this guy. Perfect. Corsair Scout Bo Bogota. Okay, there's nobody protecting Bogota. Bigota, one might say. Let's take crew weapons to make them better at defending. We've got another great rider. We will teleport the great rider over here, making more great works of riding. I think we're at the, we're, we're ahead of the curve, I want to say. Um, if we look at the culture, you can see here that uh, Lady Six guy has 140, 140-ish culture. We're at 102. Yeah, so we're about on par with Lady Six, guys. So we, we should start to outstrip her. We are starting to earn tourists. She's a little bit ahead of the curve, which is kind of annoying because she shouldn't really have that much culture, but she does. We just have to deal with the fact that she does. You know, it's kind of annoying. Um, right, so we have commercial. Now, I think it's time for our theater squares. Of course, that's a plus five theater square. Very, very schnazzy. Otherwise, we want to keep the builders a rolling. 
I'm buying a builder every single turn, a six charge builder every single turn. Like I'm never going to run out of build charges here and I should probably stop soon because there is like a diminishing return on builders. Special session of the World Congress, uh, military emergency. Well, I definitely want to vote that down with everything I have because I really don't want to deal with the military emergency right now. Now, most people in the game actually quite like me and it did fail. I probably didn't need to vote it down that much, but I did want to make sure because it was an existential threat to my culture victory. So I wanted to make sure that that got voted down. The big problem I want to say with the culture victory is things like the Bolshoi Theater. These are like a thousand, what, what is it? Uh, yeah, a thousand production for a great work of writing and a great work of music. Like this is a little bit more. This is too much production. This is too much. It's too much production. It's too, it's, it's, it's just simply too much production. Uh, we are going to go ahead and go steal from Germany as well. We did get another spy. I'm waiting for population 13 in the city. The city is unlikely to reach that level. That's fine. It's basically done. We could run Holy uh, yeah, we'll run commercial hub investment prayers or commercial hub investments <laughs> investment prayers. <laughs> oh, that's what Wall Street bets does. <laughs> investment prayers. Um, yeah, we're gonna do we're gonna do run holy site investments or oh my god, uh, commercial hub investments to try to get the the gold per turn up, but also to get more great people in the direction of great merchant go ahead and swap over here combine all our military together there we go so we're heading towards bogota we'll probably take out panama i don't know if we're going to keep going i mean here's the thing if we keep going we just have so much more land we can turn into national parks and it's virgin untouched unchopped land as well that we could just rush through with all these builders because i mean why wouldn't we if we have an easy kill on a neighbor why wouldn't we kill them there's no repercussions. There's no downside. I mean, there's downsides, but the downsides aren't enough to stop me. That's the thing. A significant blizzard. Interesting. Uh, directly on Kumasi, there's colonialism. So we're a couple of steps away from natural history as well as conservation. Uh, let's have a look. Right, You got your tread budget. Renaissance walls are next. Good job. You can get your next district. I will get the theater square. Uh, let me double check. So there is room for a theater square right here. That's perfecto. Yep, we're Susan. We definitely want to take Susan to have another one of these. We want to make sure that we stay on that culture train. In particular, Nanmadal is also quite useful for us to have. Mogadishu. It would be nice to get Mogadishu under our wing. Um, like a little mother bird. We will control and be friends with them. All right, faith pillaging. Pillaging is just nice. In general, you head that way. You move this way. Archer forward. Promote the archer. You forward you forward you forward just get all these boys moving up in line more great works this is kind of like the power of russia in civ 6 is you could just you could go to war and also uh be like powering hard for a culture victory and it just really doesn't matter because your civ is just that powerful with work work ethic like it's just it's busted honestly i i've kind of become a little bit like i don't know black pilled or red pilled or whatever the whatever the dumb internet saying is like fate saves are insane like they're just they're r r ridiculous you know i i've awoken to the truth i'm my eyes are no longer closed i see i see the the reality now right, i want to make sure i hurt this city so they can't actually continue to build walls in here i think it only has ancient walls right now yeah so you want to actually shoot the city to prevent it from building the next tier of walls we want to get a full surround on the city. And I may as well grab my Cossacks now that I have Renaissance walls. Plus it's on the way towards uh, Eiffel Tower. Anyway, we do want Eiffel. Eiffel is something we want this game. Um, let's get the Gurdwara and then the Theatre Square. That's a good national park right there. That's a national park. So Theatre Square will go here. Gurdwara into Theatre Square. Keeping the, keeping the dream alive. Go ahead and get that Gurdwara for me. Great musician, but no use. Uh, well, technically, I could have one great work of music on me if I wanted to. Step in here, boom, there's a great work of music, nice. Okay, claim a great person, another great artist, wonderful theater square. Go ahead and build me an art museum. All right, let's make sure we rip down the walls and then make sure that we're promoting as well. Little flood in here causes me a little bit of an issue. Um, maybe you can retreat to a safe distance, not really. If you go here, you might be able to pillage next turn. All right, that city should fall next turn. Momentum is everything. Speaking of momentum being everything, uh, let's make sure we're continuing to build like man at arms in pairs so they can be combined. Momentum is literally everything in war. I have never had this many builders just sitting around waiting and I think it's like a really kind of OP strategy actually, but I need to stop faith buying them I think soon. There's gonna be like a few things I have to get to line this all up. And I hope, it might be hard, but I hope I can get my war basically done with by the time I get to conservation. Also, dude, what happened to Dido? Oh my God. Dido's having a terrible game. 
literally a two city dido i don't think i've ever seen anything like that uh, did i get the f <sighs> dude crashing is so demoralizing i've got the end of turn bug i got the end of the turn bug the, the, the infinite turn end all right bogota has fallen or bogota there's a way to say it i think are we full are we full killing simon you know what we're full killing simon simon his life is forfeit he had a chance he we could have been friends i gave him plenty of opportunities he just decided to go to war with me all the time and that's it sometimes you are just a jerk and you get your your uh your country's independence taken away from you and that's that's look look all right simon bolivar said mean things about me on twitter okay that's why i'm going to war with him all right so we managed to get raj todar mal he will give plus 0 0.5 gold for each specialty district at a uh, destination for my trade route. That's a pretty good gold boost. It's not like game changing, but it's a pretty good one. Right, I think we're 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 doing walls now. You know what? Hot take. Aqueducts should give you tourism. I'm just saying. You're actually even hotter take. Your unique infrastructure should always give you tourism because it's your unique cultural thing, right? It's it's the thing no one else can do. It's it's people will come from far and wide to experience your little cute cultural thing, right? There's natural history, so archaeologists now are a distinct possibility. Archaeologists are really, really good, don't get me wrong. And I will want at least like two to three, maybe, yeah, I would say three of them, at least. Um, ideally, as many as I can get, actually. But um, I, I think three feels like a good compromise amount. Let's get these trebs up and into position for the Battle of Panama. So Panama only has ancient walls. It's good news. I'm sitting on two envoys. I have nothing to spend them on. I will go to Max Susanty with Yerevan, actually. Um, partially, A, that'll give me more scouting information. And we did find Venice, who I will promptly get to work on being friends with. Speaking of city-state missions, yeah, just earn a great scientist. I could theoretically buy a great scientist. Um, I would like Mary Leakey this game, but I don't think it's very viable for me to get her, which is why I'm going for a different kind of tourism play. So look at the value of trading with my capital. It's four food, four production. Or I can trade with Bandar Brunei or Mogadishu, or Cardiff, and get five gold, four culture, and two faith. That just makes, so like, this is the transition phase. You use your early trade routes to boost up your own empire. And then in the mid to late game, you switch to boosting up your gold income, your culture, your faith, all that sort of stuff uh, starts to come into its four later on. I do like how this is like the, rather than being the Panama Canal, this is like the Panama Mountain Pass. <laughs> it's like, it's still serving the same function as it does in like the current real world. But just in a very, very different, like, geographic, uh, 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 like, temperate, or what's the name? Terrain? In a different terrain is the, is the word I'm looking for there. I don't know where I was going with the word temperate. That's just, like, my brain. It's like autofill, and it's just, like, instead of saying terrain, it's a temperate. It's like, you know, when you're doing a Google search, it's like you, you type the first few letters of a word, and it starts autofilling with random stuff, and you're like, that's not what I wanted. No, just me? Okay. Minus two? Minus two? Any Northern Line fans in the, in the video? Just type the word egg in the comment section if you're a fan of Northern Line, okay? Or Monsieur Egg, because he's Canadian, but he's not French Canadian. But if we make out like he is French Canadian, that might annoy him. Which is honestly like the, the primary way that you should make friends. It's just like gently troll people. So it's a very effective strategy. The trick is to make sure that they're laughing. Just gently, just pranking them, you know? Verbally pranking. Oh my God, I've just fig I've figured out how to describe friendships. It's verbally pranking each other over and over again. That's all that friendships are, at least my friendships. I don't know. I don't know about you guys, but like 90% of the most interesting people I know are either like really enthusiastic listeners who uh, have really good stories or people who take the piss all the time. Oh, this is amazing. Just full send it to uh, city center and full send it to faith cheaper. Either one of these passes, I'm happy. If both pass, I'm super happy. Okay, city centered past. That's amazing. We're going to be building our walls at triple speed. So now it's just like imperative upon us that we go through to every single city and make sure we get Renaissance walls ASAP. Most of my cities have medieval or Renaissance. But yeah, let's just get them all done now while it's cheap as hell. All right, Panama, meet your maker. I'm amazed that three trebuchet cores are like doing this much work. Honestly, let's bring a couple of knights in. Okay, there's Panama. Panama has fallen. So that's yet more land for us to fill with forests and national parks. Do we keep going? I don't see a reason to stop. That's what I'm thinking. We just go, we take, we take Valencia, we take Cuenco, we take Cali, and we leave them by Caracas. Caracas, whatever it's called. Oh yeah, I should totally, uh, I should totally faith by a builder in here. Get these three Niter online, get, get myself Bombards, right? Yeah, I'm researching Bombard tech. That's like the natural follow-up. Um, I should also, how good are Cossacks actually? I mean, if you compare them to a Corsair, I would imagine they're pretty damn good. Let's faith purchase a couple of 
Cossacks just for the just for the meme just so we have them like you know oh that's a 67 combat strength unit compared to a knight that's 60 well, that's quite a bit better once we turn them into cores they'll be 77 combat strength which is very very respectable so look at the city of Yaros level um just uh, get me like three more builders we got a lot of work to do here um when we get the conservation i'm really not looking forward to it because it's just going to be a bit of a administrative nightmare um to sit around and try to try to figure out what we need to do cross the river with you combine let's get the tribes moving i would have loved a great general um to make moving a little bit easier but you know I opted not. I opted against that plan. I made the executive decision to make the game harder for myself. <sighs> the Hermitage is so terrible, dude. It's so bad. Do I have a reason not to build it, though? 25 turns for four great works of art slots. That is so awful compared to just literally making like a trader and a few builders. Like, it's, just, it's not even a comparison, dude. They're not even in the same universe of, of, of um, reasonable decision making. Like, they're not even, they're just, it's not even close. So Australia is denouncing me. I wonder why. Why Why do you hate me? Oh, it's because I because I killed like three of this guy's cities after he declared war on me twice. Okay, dude. Okay, dude. Hey, we got a... Uh, the Romeo guy. You know the one I'm talking about. The guy who did Romeo and Juli Juliet. I think his name is uh, Shaken Not Stirred. That guy. The famous. Very famous. You probably studied him in school. Oh, yeah. Look at these trade routes, man. Eight culture per turn! Ooh, baby. Oh, mama. Yes, I am a Johnny Bravo enjoyer. Any other Johnny Bravo enjoyers, actually? Man, that show was... I kind of wish it could come back. Although, it was a product of its time. You can't, you can't really bring back Johnny Bravo, can you? Oh, mama. God, he was such a chud. Ah, dude. You know what would be amazing? We need, like, the... You know the way there's all these, like, Hustler Academy and all these, like, Sigma male fucking giga chad people like posing we need like the johnny bravo school of seduction <laughs> oh my god dude that would be like the funniest thing ever oh man someone needs to like unironically like actually johnny bravo was in the right here omega lol etc dude it would actually like and it has to be a troll or but you have to play it like it's not you have to you have to, you have to play it straight because if people get a whiff that you're joking okay they'll be super mad um, so let's start planning national parks. Do you know what? Let's plan some national parks. So I'm putting the national park icons at the tip and at the bottom of the national park. Wherever they're going, that is where it goes. Tip and at the bottom. So we need to go ahead and switch now away from retainers. Eventually retainers will go back in, although it's about to go obsolete. And we want the card that gives me plus one movement in my territory so my builders can run around in a massive horde and just start planting all the forests. So, this national park here has to be owned by Novgorod. Boom, boom. And this will be the first one that I make. Look at that. Look at that. We, we, put, a, we put a little forest here. There's already a little forest there. We probably want to chop that, actually, before we um, do that. May as well chop it just to get the Renaissance walls done a little bit quicker. But yeah, let the horde awaken. It is time. It's time for the builders to rise up and claim their prize, what was rightfully theirs, this entire game. I've had them all waiting in the wings. They've been sitting here for centuries in slumber, waiting to serve. I almost said service mankind, which has a very different connotation to serve humanity. Service has a very like mechanical vibe to it. I don't know. Just seems it. See, it sounds wrong in my ears. Uh, yeah, so we definitely want to get Crystal Red and Tor. That's going to be an important part of our strategy here. But I tell you what, we're going to plan this out in the next episode because I'm getting a phone call. I love you all very much and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.